So what is light painting? Light painting is basically taking a series of images where different parts of the composition are lit, stacking them later to make one really well lit photograph. So first let's talk equipment. Things you'll need, a light that you can move around, a camera capable of long exposures, a steady tripod, and something cool to photograph. So imagine this is a real vehicle. You would be shooting with your camera facing it and then when you're in pure darkness, you would basically walk in front of the car and run the light over the edges of the car and put light wherever you need it to, to stack later and get your really well lit image. For this example, I'll be using my iPhone light to go over the edges and show you straight from the camera what it looks like. So if you were photographing a real car, you'd want to set your exposure to enough seconds that you could make your light passes across the car, which would be about 20 to 30 seconds. You'll set your aperture to super narrow, which will help get rid of ambient light and make your image as dark as possible, only allowing your light to show through. Next, you'll set your ISO super low. I don't usually go fully down to 100 because I feel like that gives a little bit of noise. I go just a slightly above 100 for ISO. For your first shot, what you'll want to do is set up your manual exposure. Put some light on the subject. Go ahead and focus the camera and then switch it over to manual mode. And this will ensure that all of your photos have the same focal point. So now that your settings are set, you'll take your light and you'll run it over your subject. You'll run it along the edges to get a nice rim light and you'll put light over the flatter surfaces to make sure you pull out all the detail. So now that we've taken all the images, it's time to pull them into Photoshop or Lightroom, do some basic edits and then stack them in Photoshop. So I do all of my editing in Photoshop, rarely am I in Lightroom. If you are a Lightroom user, you can basically do all of these steps in Lightroom until it comes time to stack. So basically, I already have a preset for when I do light painting. However, I'll go ahead and show you what kind of is in that preset. As you can see, we have these light streaks that we'll take out later on, but I like to just crush the blacks a little bit. A lot of times I'll have highlights that are a little overblown so I bring those down. I don't think that happened here so I'll just go, go ahead and kind of leave it where it was. I'll turn the clarity up a little bit, a little bit of texture and a little bit of dehaze. All of these edits help bring out some of the details and you saw some of the highlights pop out of this first image here. The next thing what I'll do is I'll basically just go through one by one and adjust the highlights and the exposure as needed. That way I can ensure that they're being brought in to stack all at the exact same exposure. So we'll go ahead and just kind of speed up through this. So now we'll stack the images in Photoshop. Go to File, Scripts, Load Files, and to Stack. If I'm only stacking a handful, maybe five images, sometimes I'll just open them straight in Photoshop and copy and paste them all together. Anything above like 10 gets a little tedious. So this script is in Photoshop is really nice. So next you'll go and select the images from your folder. So a lot of people swear by the attempt to automatically align source images, but I haven't had great luck with that. So I just, I just leave it unchecked. Click OK. And this part can take a little bit depending on your computer and how many images you're working with, how big the files are. So we'll go ahead and speed this up. So now that we have all of these stacked in Photoshop, if you start turning off the layers, you'll notice that every photo you took is in its own layer. To get a quick preview of what your combined image might look like, you can select all the layers go to the blending mode and go to lighten. That's all of your images, all of your light combined into one sort of raw final. And I found that clients really like this image because when they watched you go over their car with a light wand a whole bunch of times, 
they were kind of amazed that that's how this process is done. So when they see this final image, they really seem to like it. And so I always include this image as one of the deliverables. So now we need to get rid of all of these light streaks that showed up in our photos. And as with anything in Photoshop, there's a million ways to do the exact same thing. Some people use masks to mask it out. I just erase them out. If you go on YouTube and look up other light painting tutorials, you'll find a whole bunch of ways to do this. This is just how I do it. So I go through each individual layer with a very soft eraser, basically just paint out all of the areas that have light that I don't want to show up in the final image. So as you can imagine, this is slightly time consuming if you're working with a legitimate full-size vehicle. It's even slightly time consuming when you're working with a small pickup like this. So we're gonna go ahead and speed up through this. So now that we have all of those erased out, we can go ahead and turn all the layers back on. And here is your perfectly light painted image. I see the horizon line is off a little bit, so I'll go ahead and just rotate this. I actually would like the front end to be raised a little bit, almost like it's looking up, you know, going forward. And I'll go ahead and adjust the composition here to be a little bit more flattering. And since this is probably gonna end up being the thumbnail, I'll go ahead and change this to a 16-9 ratio for the thumbnail and Boom. So now you can start turning the layers on and off and making decisions on what you want to show up in the image. So at the beginning, one step I forgot to do was make a new layer, go over here to your paint bucket tool, make it pitch black and make a layer at the very end that's just pitch black. That way it's easy to see what shows up, what you erased, and you don't have the checkerboard pattern behind it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up here instead of just turning turning layers on and off. I kind of like how this has a little bit of the whole color in here, but it's not over, it's not too bright. You just get enough detail. And I see that there is a little bit of a light reflection in this window. I'm gonna figure out which layer that's on, grab my eraser tool back, and then just erase that out of the window. And we knew we had a pretty dramatic under light somewhere down here. So let's go ahead and find that with the wheels. Here we go. And as you can see, this highlights that middle body line really well. But as we referred to earlier, the wheels are quite blown out. So I'm just gonna go in here and erase out that portion of the wheels. As I know there is a shot in here where the wheels are well exposed. So then we'll just keep going through the layers and deciding what we like. Um, this shot has, puts a little bit more detail into the cab and the disco ball, uh, which is pretty flattering. And that's just, um, I'm gonna leave that layer off a little bit uh, for a while. So I like how this layer brings out the fur, uh, but I don't like how what it did to the, to the disco ball. So I'm gonna go ahead and just erase out the top portion of that whole layer and then keep what it did into in the fur. So you'll notice the highlights in the middle of the disco ball that really brought out some detail, uh, but it was a little blown out on the edges. I'm gonna go ahead and erase out the edges, but leave that portion of the disco ball. So on this layer, this was one of our rim light shots where we put, the, put some light on the very front and the very rear of the Econoline but I didn't like the extra fur that it grabbed, so I'll go ahead and just erase that out. So this is where we put some light in the windows. And so what this does is because there's pitch blackness in the background and by putting light in the cab, it kind of brings that truck to life a little bit. What I'm gonna do is erase out the, the light that it put on other things in the composition and then it's just a little bright. So um, what I'm gonna do is go in here to my layers and just bring that down a little bit until it's just like a, just a little bit more realistic on if you did have like dash lights in there or something like that. Go ahead and see what happens and lower the opacity a little bit. Since it is blown out, it gets a little gray. So I'm just gonna leave it kind of like that. And I like that it brought out the scratches in the glass on the pickup and then looks like we had a shot where we put a little bit of light on the front of the fur but i kind of like how it's backlit 
Um, it almost looks like grass. Here is your final Econoline light painted image. Don't forget to save your PSD, which is another thing that I should have done at the beginning. So if you were actually shooting this car out in real life, out in an environment, you'd want to find a spot that is as dark as it can be and watch out for atmosphere light, lights in the background. Consider if you'll be able to erase it out easily and post. As you can imagine, you could shoot a couple shots where you can see stars in the sky or the clouds or the moon and really bring some more feeling into this. Because we were shooting a model pickup, what I'm gonna do is go to a previous light painting job of my buddy Trevor Kimes vehicles because we got some really neat sky stuff in there. I'm going to straight up pull the sky from some of those images into our Econoline image. So as you can see, I'm just going to copy and paste this image over this image and it is a little small, so I'm just gonna go ahead and enlarge it to be the size of the screen. We don't need the red pickup anymore. So we're gonna go ahead and erase out the anything involving the red pickup. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on a lighten layer and then we'll run our eraser just kind of along the edge of the Econoline and the disco ball. You know, we'll give it a good soft brush here. And then that way we don't have any sky, any clouds or stars poking through on the actual image. Now, I really like the color of the sky, but if you wanted to change it, make it maybe a little bit more teal, um, something a little bit more consistent with the truck, or maybe you wanted to make it a little bit opposite, put a little bit of orange in there to tie it into the roof of the Econoline a little bit. This is purely up to you. You could go, you know, any way you wanted to with this. After experimenting a little bit, I think I'm gonna leave the sky how it is. This is the final image. So once we're done, we're gonna hit save. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll make just a couple small adjustments to the overall image. So what I'll, I'll go ahead and just duplicate all of these and mash them together, but keep all my layers just in case I wanna go back. So I'm going to make a couple of universal changes to the final image, which would involve a little bit of noise reduction. You could also do this in the raw editing stage. A little bit of contrast. We'll go ahead and put our highlights where we need them. My style tends to be a little intense, so I usually put the clarity up just a little bit. Clarity and contrast and that kind of thing. And then just a very slight vignette to bring the eye down to the subject um, versus kind of having that light from the moon that was on the left. Highly feather this. So just, uh, just something very subtle there. That would be somewhat realistic. And now you have your final image that you can give to your client. So hopefully you learn the basics of light painting here. Obviously there's a whole bunch of different ways to do the same thing, whether it's the editing or the shooting, you know, using different lights, using different techniques, but this should give you an idea on how to get started and experiment. So to give you an idea, this is what my first light painting experiment looked like. And it's kind of like with any other photograph. Um, I don't remember who said it, but you know, your first 10,000 photographs are your worst. So just keep doing it and uh, you'll learn something new every time. If you did learn something, that's great. Like, share, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.